Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about various theories of the creation of our beautiful yet unusual moon. I've talked about many theories on this channel but today we're going to kind of summarize how we think this beautiful satellite was formed. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So using Universe Sunblock Square, we're going to actually recreate some of these unusual hypotheses and theories and talk about them in a little bit uh, more detail. Now, how was this unusual satellite formed according to the scientists? And this is actually kind of interesting. Look at how one of the moons became the planet. It actually uh, was able to destroy the other moon and kind of sucked up a lot of the mass from the other moon, creating what seems to be a planet and a satellite. These used to be just two very similar moons. Anyway, we're kind of uh, getting off track here, so let's start with Earth and the Moon. There are at least five different hypotheses that are quite unique and quite different in how we think this was formed about four something billion years ago. First one is very, very, very common, and I've talked about this previously. It's known as the Giant Impact Hypothesis. And the way it goes is as follows. Something like 4.4 billion years ago, possibly 4.3 billion years ago, a planet by the name of Theia approached Earth and decided to collide with it, creating a lot of fragments. And these fragments coalesced into what then became the Moon. That's hypothesis number one. You can explore it in more detail by watching one of my previous videos. Second hypothesis is very similar. However, in this hypothesis, when they collided with the Earth, instead of creating fragments, what it created was this. A very, very large, super large amount of debris orbiting around planet Earth. Actually, even more than this. So basically, a huge torus of debris. It created essentially what would be a cloud of dust in orbit around the planet. And with time, this dust coalesced into what then became a moon. So it wasn't the fragments, but it was this unusually large dust cloud that was actually much, much bigger than this. It would extend up to about millions of kilometers away from planet Earth. And this eventually coalesced into a large rock that then became the moon. So this is the second hypothesis uh, that basically has a very similar beginning, but slightly different ending. A much simpler hypothesis goes like this. A long time ago, some kind of a rock, and when I say some kind of a rock, I really mean the moon, passed relatively close to planet Earth, eventually being captured into the orbit of our planet. So essentially here, it was nothing more but an orbital capture of an object that already existed. And eventually this orbit was circularized and Moon sort of established a relatively complex but relatively stable orbit around planet Earth. This, however, is not a very popular theory for many reasons, including the fact that Earth and Moon are way too similar in composition for this to be a, a very foreign object. Another somewhat more unusual hypothesis comes from the son of Charles Darwin, the person behind the theory of evolution, and his son George proposed this back in 19th century. He called this the fission theory. Basically, the way it goes is as follows. A long time ago, I guess uh, in this case billions of years ago, Earth used to spin much faster. And I'm going to try to simulate this here by increasing the... Uh, spin of our Earth. And because it was spinning much faster, um, a layer on, off the surface of our planet kind of started to escape. Now, unfortunately, we can't really simulate this in the game very easily, but what I could do is maybe put a smaller moon right here in orbit just so that it actually creates a kind of a ring around our planet Earth. And so this is the ring that would have actually uh, been kicked off the planet's surface because the planet would be spinning too fast. And this ring that was kicked off the surface eventually uh, reached the outer layers of the orbit and coalesced or combined into a very large object that then obviously became the moon. Now, this particular hypothesis is not really accepted anymore, mostly because we don't think Earth was spinning that fast. 
But there is a very similar hypothesis that has been proposed in 2010 that suggested maybe it wasn't really the spin, but some kind of a super high explosion, like a volcanic eruption, uh, that caused a huge amount of surface material from Earth to escape into the outer space and to then coalesce into the moon. This would explain why Earth and um, Moon are so similar in composition, but would not really explain where this kind of explosion would actually come from. Maybe it was a collision, maybe it was something else that we haven't discovered yet, but nevertheless, this hypothesis exists. And yet another formation theory is known as the coal formation theory, and in this case, it refers to the idea that when the sun was still young and the solar system was still developing, uh, the actual disk uh, that would actually form the Earth, also formed the Moon as well. So in this case, at a distance of about one astronomical unit, both the Earth and the Moon formed at the same time from the same material. And in this case, basically, Earth and the Moon were formed very similar to how uh, we think dual planets are formed as well. In other words, that moon might actually not be a satellite, but a companion planet or a dual planetary system uh, with our planet Earth. But the problem with this particular hypothesis is once again the composition. So here we can't really explain why moon doesn't really have a very large um, iron core like our planet Earth does, and why the in internal composition of the moon is different from inter internal composition of Earth. In other words, it's very likely that the moon was actually created from Earth, not with it. And so here we come to one of the last and one of the more recent explanations of the formation of Earth, and that's the one that I kind of like myself, mostly because it creates a lot of cool explosions. And this is the, the multiple collision hypothesis of uh, lunar formation, and it basically says that instead of just one collision, over about a period of hundreds of million years, uh, several collisions occurred, creating rings around our planet Earth, creating a lot of fragments, um, and with time, each of these fragments combined with larger and larger fragments forming the moon. Now, it seems unlikely that this may have actually occurred because collisions are kind of rare, but in the early solar system, there was a lot of stuff f flying around, and collisions were a lot more common. And uh, because these um, collisions were from smaller objects, not just a planet, but possibly a protoplanet, so objects that were kind of similar to things like Ceres, for example, which I'm going to try to uh, collide with our planet Earth here. Uh, so these smaller objects may have created just enough debris around our planet Earth that it slowly coalesced into a larger and larger object. So it didn't really create a lot of stuff and it would only affect the surface of our planet, which is why Moon, in terms of its composition, might actually be so similar to the surface of our planet Earth. In other words, the entire Moon is essentially made up of the surface rocks that were released from Earth, um, not just once, not just, twi not just twice, but possibly up to 20 different times as the smaller fragments collided with our planet Earth. It's a pretty cool explanation. We're not sure if this is what exactly happened, but maybe one day we'll find out as we explore the Moon and as we learn more about our planet Earth as well. So these are some of the wilder theories on wilder hypotheses um, of the lunar formation. And hopefully now you'll learn something new uh, about space, sciences, and of course, our beautiful moon as well. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video and consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. Anyway, let's uh, maybe stop our moon collided with our planet Earth one last time for one massive collision and stop this video here. Anyway, space out guys, I'll see you in the next video, bye bye. And hopefully you've had enough collisions for one day. See you later, alligators.